Well, Niha viewers, this week I have been learning Mandarin. Washu Yingua Jen. But I'm sure you didn't come here to learn Mandarin. So today's video is on the myths that you're told when you're out riding. So be that a new rider or an old rider alike, people tell you things and are they true or is it just a myth? And the main one that everyone comes out with is everybody on the road wants to kill you. And well, it is a myth. No, everybody on the road doesn't want to kill you. Everybody on the road is you. I mean, at the end of the day, don't be one of those arseholes that are like, oh yeah, man, I only ride a bike and those cages versus us. You know, chances are you probably drive a car too when it's pissing it down with rain or it's winter and fucking freezing. So, people in cars are also bikers. And even if they're not bikers, most people in cars really couldn't care less if you're on a bike or not. They're actually quite nice. But what you have to appreciate is cars are fucking boring. Especially modern cars. I mean, there's just nothing to do. I mean, it's, you know, when you get a modern car with a high spec, you got auto lane control, auto wiper cancellation, auto headlights. I mean, shit, all you do is really just point it in the direction you want to go and the car does it all itself. So what do you do when you're bored in the car? Well, I'll tell you what you don't do, pay attention. When you're in your car, bored shitless, you daydream, you play about. And if your phone is up on the side, because it's sat nav, and somebody texts you, and there's like a beep, 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 what, you're telling me that you have the discipline to not look, you know? Was that Kelly Brook texting me back? Ni hao Kelly, Kelly Shu Mong. Then of course you got people ringing you on your phone as well, Bluetooth in your car. You got your stereo buzzing away, or you're air playing a, a song to your radio and you're thinking, that's not the song I want, where's the playlist I want? There's just so much fucking distraction in a car. And you can't blame car drivers for getting sucked in, because we all do it. Do not disturb while driving should be enabled by default, but it isn't. So when the text message comes in and you get that little preview on your phone, are you telling me you're not going to look? And that text message finally comes in, it goes ding, you get a little preview, a couple of sentences, and it's Kelly, she's texted me back, Ni mong ma Kelly, I'll be around tonight. So the theory that all car drivers want to kill you, is valid you should ride that way because although they don't want to kill you you know they're reading that text message from kelly and before they know it they're over here and then go oh shit there's somebody there and they swerve back or they're playing with their radio i mean god in the cayman i got this um, android stereo system touchscreen and to change the volume is this minuscule little dot that you got to twist and it's like it's, it's fucking dangerous because you're there looking at that down here playing with that not in front of you not seeing you know the oncoming car or bike or cars are just so boring and you just switch off as a rider you have to anticipate that car in front is going to swerve out on you or that car in front is not looking where they're going or you know they've had a hard day and they're pissed off and they just want to get past you and you're going too slow whatever it is The worst thing that drivers do at the moment is when I was learning drive, you were taught mirror, signal, then maneuver. I mean, fuck that today. I mean, at the moment, all you see is maneuver and signal simultaneously, and the signal is lucky if you get that. Oh, gravel. 
quite often a car will not look in their mirror before pulling out they literally just pull out and that's usually the time when you're overtaking as well you both had the same great idea except you got a hell of a lot more acceleration under your belt so when you're overtaking just always think could that car pull out on me when you're riding here I've got a safe distance from the car in front you've just always got to anticipate that car drivers will do something stupid but car drivers are not your worst enemy on the road cyclist your actual worst enemy on the road is your fellow bikers the amount of times you know I just said cars don't mirror signal then maneuver well a lot of uh, motorbike uh, riders don't perform a lifesaver and the lifesaver is really there to check that another bike's not had the idea of filtering through or overtaking I mean a lifesaver is just you just check over your shoulder to make sure that your blind spot is covered and you know we all forget once in a while but it's happened to me quite a few times where I'm pulling up behind a car and I think ah, I'm gonna filter and I just do that lifesaver before I move and thank God I do because that's where you see the motorbike just go past you you know where he's riding he's seen you pull up behind a car and thought you're not filtering so I will need petrol <laughs> petroleum I need some I mean the thing is is at the end of the day the more you ride the more you're going to develop that sixth sense of knowing that oh that car there is suspicious or you just look for their wheels or you see the driver in their wing mirror and you just think nah I'm not happy about this I need to get out of this danger or I need to back off and that just comes with riding and just you know having people pull out on you a few times picking it up this would be a road to do the daily 150. Who is he at the 150? Mm. Nah. Yatta! Oh no, that was Japanese. Kawasaki. Oh, wait, where was I? Oh, where am I actually? That's a good point. I'm in a field somewhere. Should have gone that way. Motherfucker! At least I think I should have gone that way. I don't fucking know. Where am I? It's very nice. You will develop that sixth sense. You will start to figure out. Ooh, that that car in front of me, I don't like it. And when they do what you expect them to do like you're riding along and you're like that car's going to pull out that car's going to pull out oh uh, look they fucking pulled out don't lose your shit over it I mean at the end of the day the, the car has just done what you expected them to do you were there saying they're going to pull out and they did and you anticipated or at least we hope you anticipated by putting yourself in a safe position where it didn't matter if the car pulled out or not so when that happens yeah all right it can be a bit frustrating but just keep your cool don't lose your shit at the end of the day getting angry and riding angry is the worst thing you can do the car has done what you wanted them to do so why be angry and of course there's always one in your circle that you know of that will suffer from road rage I mean not to name names in our group but if I was to name him it would sound very similar to Manny Niha Manny you got somebody who really gets wound up you should discourage them but although it is fucking funny Look at this car, it's gonna pull out at me, it's gonna pull out! It fucking pulled out, you fucking wanker! Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, so long as they're not bashing mirrors and chasing you down, it is funny, but at the same time, you know, just, just chill. You're on a bike, they're not, you're having fun, they're falling asleep. 
I mean, that's because it's really fucking pissing it down with rain and freezing, in which case the car might be a nice place to be. Oh, you need Kelly's in the car. Looking fine as Kelly Brookshire. What's Mandarin for sexy as fuck? Hey Siri, what's Mandarin for sexy as fuck? Uh, I ain't gonna remember that. Most drivers, especially in the UK, are, you know, quite bike friendly. Like the amount of times I'll see cars pull out the way for me. And at the end of the day, you know, even myself as a rider, when I'm in the car, I see a bike behind me. I don't want it there, it's intimidating. You know, especially when you see this RR fucking wee come up behind you. You want to get out of its way. A lot of car drivers are moving over, giving you room to overtake, letting you filter. Yeah, okay, you do get the odd one that's going to have a moan at you, but very, very rare. I still need petroleum. Go, go, juice. Well, maybe I should just shift up. Nah. I like my exhaust. Now, are you going to pull out? Now, are you going to pull out? You just have to anticipate. I was covering the brake. I was doing 30 miles an hour. If they pulled out, I would have stopped. Is that guy going to jump out? Of course he's not. He's a pussy. Pussy hole. He's probably a very nice man. I mean, the thing is as well, I've done it where I pulled out at a roundabout thinking I could get out quick enough. A biker was coming on the other lane and I'm not going quick enough. He's going too quick. And you know, you could just see on his face like, oh, for fuck's sake. And you were there going, I'm sorry, please. I'm a biker too. <sighs> MT10. Very nice. Bouncy, 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 bouncy rod. Yeah, that's right, and here's an iron bouncing. Bouncing like a cow garland. Fuel tank reached. It's reached. Everything on my screen. Fuel tank reserve. Fuck off. To be fair though, I do need warnings like that because I'll just carry on riding and it'll be like, what's, what's gone wrong? What's up with my bike? Oh, run out of fuel. Uh, um, 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 um. too hard on drivers you know at the end of the day they're stuck in all that traffic and you're just blipping by on your bike with a massive grin on your face like <laughs> so shishi for watching guys thanks as always and to my mandarin speaking followers i apologize for butchering your language like and the subscribe would really help the channel we're up to at the time of this recording 800 subscribers so if we can get to a thousand that would be wunderbar i may even invest in a map sissi and sishen call me kelly